Hello, we're Andy, the maniacal cinephile, and we're taking a look at Jordan Peele's third film, Nope. Um, why Nope? Well, people speculated it stood for not of planet Earth, but Jordan Peele said it's how black people would react to the events in the movie. Nope. That's my response when other theater patrons tell me to stop masturbating. Nope is a sci-fi horror film written, directed, and co-produced by Jordan Peele. Peele said he wrote the movie when Hollywood was a little worried about the future of cinema, so he needed something the audience would have to come see. He needed to create a spectacle, because humanity has an addiction to spectacle. I have an addiction to removing my street stop sign. Time to get the popcorn! Peel's screenplay was influenced by King Kong, Jurassic Park, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Signs, and The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz? Oh. I haven't seen a monkey tear someone apart like that since the Scarecrow. They tore my legs off and they threw them over there. Ever since the arrival of the trailer, viewers have speculated who or what the main threat is. Intergalactic beings? Time travelers? World killers? Anal probe enthusiasts? Was the marketing throwing us off the scent? Which turned out to be our dirty socks. Or does Jordan Peele have a trick up his sleeve? The film is set on a horse farm in California called Haywood Hollywood Horses. They provide animals for movies and TV productions. Its owner, Otis Haywood Sr., played by Keith David, dies mysteriously after debris rains down and he's struck by a coin. An old buffalo nickel depicting a Native American, to be precise. Hmm. I wonder how much that nickel would be worth. Five cents? The farm is taken over by his two children, Emerald and Otis Jr., nicknamed OJ. Well, that's unfortunate. Like my friend Butch Theodore Kowalski, nicknamed BTK. The kids aren't fit to fill their father's shoes. The introverted OJ loves working with the horses, but on set he isn't a great communicator. His sister Emerald is very outgoing, but is an aspiring filmmaker and views the family horse thing as just a job. With the ranch in financial trouble, they sell horses to a nearby western theme park called Jupiter's Claim. Why not breed them? Horse semen is white gold! However, when a mysterious object appears in the sky, the siblings decide to film it in hopes of selling the UFO footage to save the ranch. Turns out, they only needed $10. For the Haywoods, their backstory involves the very birth of cinema. In what could be considered the first motion pictures, we see a black man riding a horse in 1878. Emerald claims the horse rider is their great-great-great-grandfather. Our great-great-great-grandpappy was also a horse rider. No, he was ridden out of town on a horse. In real life, we don't know who the jockey was. It would have been more interesting if OJ later revealed it was something their father made up to impress people and get work. I always lie on my resume. It's how I spent a summer assisting a gynecologist. One criticism would be that the characters aren't fully developed. Why is OJ so quiet? Daniel Kaluuya is a great actor, but he looks bored most of the movie. Kiki Palmer is more charismatic as Emerald and a little more fleshed out. 
Otis Sr. took OJ along for his first on-set job, providing horses for the Scorpion King. They took a horse named Jean Jacket to the gig, which was supposed to be the first horse Emerald trained. The snub still irks her, so during the finale, OJ nicknames the UFO Jean Jacket, giving Emerald the chance to finally tame something. Another life ruined because of the Scorpion King. The character with the best backstory is actually Steven Yeun's character, Ricky Jupe Park. As a kid, he was in the sitcom Gordy's Home, about a chimp who went to space and now lives with an astronaut and her family, the Houstons. Gordy is played by Terry Notary, who also played Rocket in the rebooted Planet of the Apes trilogy. In 1998, Gordy attacked three of its co-stars after being startled by a popped balloon. The show's youngest actor, Ricky, hid under a table and is traumatized. That sounds so horrible. The headlines read three maimed. Monkey goes bananas. In the present, Ricky has some unprocessed trauma from the incident and describes the memory as being like the SNL sketch with Chris Kattan. Oh, oh, please get this thing off of me! <laughs> so, another six-minute tragedy! However, Ricky also profits from the incident, and because Gordy didn't attack him, he feels he's the exception. When he connects with the UFO, he once again feels special and wants to finally tame the beast and profit off of it. Yun's character has the more interesting backstory, and maybe should have been the main character. My favorite characters were the inflatable tube men. The whole Gordy incident may have been inspired by Charla Nash, who was mauled by a chimp in 2009. She revealed her injuries on the Oprah Winfrey show, and she wore a hat and veil similar to what Mary Jo wears during the Jupiter's Claim attack. Perhaps this is why Emerald is so obsessed with getting that Oprah shot. My buddy Butch once flirted with a chimp in a dress. It peeled his dick like a banana. It's mentioned in the film that a UFO, or Unidentified Flying Object, is now called a UAP, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. Halfway through the movie, we realize this isn't an object. It's not a ship. It's an animal from outer space. It's eating horses, people, and then spitting out their belongings. My favorite part is when it ate that crowd and then rained bloody diarrhea all over their house. I mean, that's how we consume media now. We chew it up, spit it out, and then move on. Jean Jacket was inspired by jellyfish and other deep sea creatures that look alien. It was a neat idea, and the creature was original and fantastical. At first, it does look like a flying saucer, a stingray in the sky. But then you notice it's not metallic. It almost looks like it's made out of a sail. By the end of the film, when Jean Jacket unfurls itself, it delivered something unique that I haven't seen before. Plus, like the Gordy subplot, the animal's downfall involves a balloon. Tassels? were its enemy. They should have called the Macho Man. Jordan Peele has a great imagination and thinks outside the box. Every scene is layered with subtext, tying into the themes. I do wish some of the ideas were a little more cohesive and some fat was trimmed, especially to speed up the first half of the film. Even at the end, a faceless TMZ reporter suddenly pops in and feels like a cartoon character that quickly gets eaten. Ew, what a lousy last meal. Peel is very interested in history and legacy but I wish he focused just a tad bit more on the characters instead of the spectacle. Peel explained that he wanted the clouds to be a major focus of the film because gazing up at the sky is like watching the first movies. I love looking up at the clouds and using my imagination. Over the years, I've taken some stunning photos. The film explores the danger of the cinematic gaze. No eye contact becomes 
very important, whether it's training the horses or dealing with the UFO. The alien threat at the center of the film is a huge spectacle, one you want to look at, even if it means your death. Like gawking at the farmer's daughter! Nope was shot in the desert north of LA County. I love the cinematography, especially those extreme wide shots of the dirt, mountains, and those clouds. Nope was shot by cinematographer Hoyt Van Hoytema, who shot Christopher Nolan's recent films. He used Kodak film, including 65mm film in IMAX format. If you can, this was meant to be seen in a theater. Eh, I'll probably watch it on my tablet. Nope is a mix of Western and sci-fi. It's the story of black people in the Old West and the New West that is Hollywood. While there are moments of horror and unsettling imagery, it's less a horror movie and more of an old school summer blockbuster like Jaws. So, should you see Nope? Don't say yep. Don't say yep. Don't say yep. Sure. I don't know. It was good. Definitely worth a watch. But out of his three films, it would be my third favorite. We've been Andy, the maniacal cinephile. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We'll see you next time.